Let's say if you want to evaluate log base 3 of 21, how do you find the answer? Well, you can certainly try to rewrite this logarithmic expression into its equivalent exponential expression, which is 3 raised to the power of question mark equals to 21. However, that's not very helpful because even though we can easily tell that 3 to the second power is 9, 3 to the third power is 27, we really cannot tell 3 raised to what power equals to 21. And if you try to use your calculator to help you, most scientific calculator does not allow you to directly evaluate a logarithmic expression with an arbitrary base. Most likely, your calculator only allows you to evaluate directly the common logarithm and the natural logarithm, in other words, logarithmic expressions with the base of 10 or natural base number e. So what do you do in this case? For that purpose, we can use the change of base property of logarithm, which states that for any arbitrary logarithmic expression, log base a of x, it can be rewritten into the quotient form of log base b of x over log base b of a. Here it is important that for both the numerator and the denominator, the base b are the same. And since both a and b are the base constants for logarithmic expression, they have to satisfy that they must be positive, but also they cannot be 1. And for x, x must be positive. Well, if you're wondering why this is true for logarithm, let me show you real fast. Let's say if we use letter n to represent this numerator, log base b of x. In other words, log base b of x equals to n, therefore we can rewrite this logarithmic expression into its equivalent exponential expression that b to the nth power equals to x. Then we use letter m to represent the denominator, therefore log base b of a equals to m. Again, we can rewrite this into the exponential expression b to the nth power equals to a. Now, we want to relate x and a through this b here. Since x equals to b to the nth power, and according to simple algebra, n equals to m multiplied by n over m, therefore we can rewrite this term to be b to the power of m multiplied by n over m. And based on our knowledge of the property of exponential expression, this equals to b to the nth power together raised to the power of n over m. And again, because b to the nth power equals to a, so we get this. And if we look at the beginning and the end of this long expression, we realize that x equals to a raised to the power of n over m. This is, again, an exponential expression. And we can rewrite this expression into its equivalent logarithmic expression to be log a of x equals to n over m. But then n is log base b of x, m is log base b of a, therefore substitute them in, we get the change of base formula. When you apply the change of base formula, you can choose b to be any arbitrary base, as long as it's positive and it's not 1. However, for convenience, we would like to choose the base of 10. Therefore, your arbitrary logarithmic expression, log base a of x, can be written as the quotient of two common logarithms, log x over log a. Or we want to choose base of e, the natural base constant. Therefore, again, your arbitrary logarithmic expression can be written as the quotient of two natural logarithms, ln x over ln a. And the reason is really simple. As I mentioned earlier, most calculators only allow you to evaluate directly common logarithm or natural logarithm. Therefore, now by using the change of base using base of 10 or base of e, you have a way to evaluate arbitrary logarithmic expressions. Let's apply the change of base formula that we just learned to evaluate log base 2 of 8. And of course, you might be able to tell already that this equals to 3. 
because two raised to the third power equals to eight. Well, let's still use what we've learned just now to verify this method would work. So, if we change the base to the base of ten using common logarithm, therefore log base two of eight equals to the quotient of common logarithm log eight over log two. Then let's use our calculator to evaluate first log eight. This is the result for log eight. Then for the denominator, log two, then if you use your calculator to do a continuous calculation, this equals to exactly three. Or if we use the natural base constant e as our new base instead, then log base two of eight equals to the quotient of the two natural logarithm, ln eight over ln two, and then using the calculator, ln eight equals to this, ln2 equals to this, and if you again do a continuous calculation using your calculator, this should equal to exactly three. And if you recall, in the beginning, I asked the question, how do we evaluate log base three of twenty-one? And since we have learned the change of base formula, we can now use either common logarithm or natural logarithm to evaluate this expression. So let's use common logarithm first. Log base three twenty one equals to the quotient of common logarithm log twenty one over log three. Using our calculator, we get approximately two point seven seven one. Or if we use the natural base constant e, this becomes the quotient of natural logarithm ln twenty one over ln three. Again, using our calculator, we get exactly the same answer. Approximated to be 2.771. If you remember, I said earlier, three raised to the second power is nine. Three raised to the third power is 27. Therefore, you expect the answer to be somewhere between two and three, and 2.771 is a very reasonable answer. Here are some very basic properties of logarithm. First, we have the product property, log base a of u times v, or in other words, log base a, the product of u and v, equals to log base a u plus log base a of v. The quotient property, log base a u over v, or log base a of the quotient of u and v, equals to log a u minus log a v. And lastly, power property log base a of u to the nth power equals two. We can pull n out as a coefficient, n times log base a of u. Now, it is not a coincidence that we have these properties, and I will demonstrate in the next slide using the product property why this is true. Therefore, it is crucially important that when you are applying these properties, you must write them in the correct form. I'll prove the product property as an example. You can prove the quotient property and the power property using exponential properties in a similar way, and I will leave it to you to do that. So again, let me use letter n to represent log base a of u. Therefore, a raised to the power of n equals to u. Let me use letter m to represent log base a of v. Therefore, a raised to the power of m equals to v. Therefore, the product of u and v equals to a to the nth power times a to the nth power. And according to the exponential property that we learned before, this equals to a raised to the power of n plus m. And if you look at the first term and the last term. This is again an exponential expression, and we can rewrite it into its equivalent logarithmic expression that log base a of u v equals to n plus m, and substitute back what n and m represent, which is log base a of u and log base a of v, and we get the product property. 
Let's look at this example. Let's apply the properties of logarithm that we just learned to expand it into the form of algebraic combination of simple basic logarithms. So first, let's apply the quotient property to rewrite it into the subtraction form. Keep in mind that square root means that a number raised to the one half power. And then we can apply the power property to pull out the exponents one half and two as coefficients and write them in front of the logarithm and get this. And then for the first term, we can apply the product property to expand it in this form of addition. And then within the parentheses for the first term, we can apply the power property again to pull out the exponents three and two and pull them out in front of the logarithm sign as coefficients. And we get this. And lastly, we can multiply the first term out. And this is our final answer. Here, keep in mind that do not rewrite this term into either this or this, which are very common mistakes that I've seen before. If you study the properties of logarithm, you will realize that these two transformations are not based on any property of logarithm, and they are incorrect. For this example, we can use the properties of logarithm reversely to condense this expression into one single logarithm expression. So for the first term within the brackets, we can use both the product property and the quotient property reversely to rewrite it into this form. And then we can use the power property reversely to move this uh, coefficient 2 in front of the logarithm inside the logarithm as exponent. And then we can use the quotient property again reversely and then rearrange and we get this single logarithm expression.